This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha from Hilo, Hawaii. I'm Bernard Bossis, and I'm a senior business advisor with the Small Business Development Center in Hilo, and we service the East Hawaii area of the Big Island of Hawaii. I'm here today to introduce to you a young lady by the name of Maddie May Larson, and she is the owner and designer for Upcycle Hawaii. And Maddie has a real interesting here history. Uh, she started recycling, or shall we say, Repurposing, reinventing. Re repurposing and reinventing all the things that we do in Hawaii, or all the trash that we do. Uh, she started in elementary school. Uh, she started making bracelets out of soda can pop tops and, and making quilts from torn clothing and things like that. Just repurposing anything she could find. Uh, today, and starting in 2016, she started her own business. It was fantastic and she's grown today and she's opened her own LLC now and without further to do Maddie how are you today I'm very good Bernard thank you so much for having me on think tank Hawaii today yeah. well Maddie I'd like to get right into a little discussion about your business if that's okay and can you tell us a little bit of your history with, with upcycling well upcycling yes well my, my journey kind of starts as a lifelong environmentalist um, and a lifelong creative. I've been making things since I was a child, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, and I started to feel kind of bad about some of the resources and materials that I was using in my work. Mm -hmm. I was using things that were finite sources and I was creating waste. Mm -hmm. And so I was really motivated to look at materials which we were throwing away and see if I could repurpose those into products that could be brought to market. That's fantastic. Yes. So, you know, as you're doing those kind of things, now you've, you've grown over the years and what what got you really into business well what got me into business was the constant comments from my friends family and strangers um, on the different items that i was making mm -hmm. i was carrying my pop tab purse around and can continue to get comments and people wanted them and so i put together a small inventory and um you know took the first leap and entered my first farmer's market back in late 2015 and um slowly progressed um, and before I knew it I had been in the farmers markets for over a year and I had created an additional 12 products that were, were actually selling for profit. So what happens after the farmers markets? I mean you're not so much in the farmers markets anymore. No I'm not. Um, I was very fortunate to be approached back in early 2016 by mm -hmm. a great retail shop up in Javi known as Elements mm -hmm. and they wanted some of my products. They had seen me in a market and were interested in selling in a local boutique and so I went home and realized that I was gonna have to figure out some wholesale pricing and it wasn't easy but I was able to actually figure out the wholesale pricing on the items that I was creating and because I was still in a profit margin, um, I jumped into that first retail opportunity. And slowly over the past you know, year and a half, I've been able to gain an additional six wholesale accounts on Hawaii Island. Mm -hmm. And I've been very fortunate to actually have shipped my products both nationally and internationally. So you're all over the world then. I am officially a worldwide brand. Yes, that is correct. That's fantastic. It is. So now that you've done wholesale, are you out of the farmers markets or? You know, I um, I've been kept very busy with my wholesale orders, um, and so right now the time just um, isn't there for me to be able to beat the streets in the markets. And I like to say that I'm fortunate that I don't have to set up my booth, um, you know, three times a week like I used to. But I also do miss the personal interaction that I used to get with my customers. Um, but you still have customers via internet and co-branding. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about that before we get into your product? Absolutely. So, um, in addition to my, my wholesale clients, mm -hmm. I do have a website, mm -hmm. um, you know, www.upcyclehi.com. And so I, I do sell my products online via um, Instagram and my website. Mm -hmm. And um, due to a recent customizable option that I have on one of my products, I've been doing a lot of co-branding, which I think we may talk about a little bit later on. Yes, we will. Yeah. 
you know, with now that we know something about Maddie May and her business, there's really a few things that you do with your business. You you go collect stuff mm -hmm. because you're recycling, you're helping the environment. Absolutely. And then you make materials that you use to make products. Yes, yes. So tell me a little bit about the stuff that you save the environment. Well, I use a lot of stuff, um, but first I want to talk about where I get my stuff. Do that. So I collect my stuff um, from highway cleanups off the side of the roads. Mm -hmm. I collect my stuff during beach cleanups. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually get a lot of my stuff direct from local businesses. Um, there's a lot of what I like to call behind the scenes waste that we don't think about as consumers. Mm -hmm. Most things get shipped to Hawaii and everything is wrapped in things like plastics. Mm -hmm. And so I take advantage of those kind of those backdoor channels as far as resources are concerned. Mm -hmm. And so so I'm very thankful to have um, to have a community that helps collect for me. But a lot of the stuff that you'll see today um, is still fine during during some cleanup efforts. Well, why don't you show me a few things? All right. Um, well, I, you know, as I mentioned, I do work with a lot of materials. Yes. So what I brought with you today is actually some of my most popular materials. And in my experience, some of the things that we're throwing away a lot of as consumers. Mm -hmm. So here, I've got something that we should all be very familiar with. Um, I've got some sheet plastics here. And so you may recognize this as some shopping bags from your local grocery yes. store. Um, I believe this might have been a large sheet plastic that was wrapped around a mattress. I was at just going to say it looks like old mattress covers that when I bought a new mattress. That's exactly, exactly right. right. And so we've got our post consumer, what I call sheet plastics here. And then, believe it or not, I also, because I do a lot of work with Hawaii Wildlife Fund and oh, beach yes? cleanups. I put a lot of this nasty ghost ropes and these fibers. Oh, ropes like this? You mean like, like... Yeah, and you know, Bernard, they actually strangle our wildlife just like that too. And so what you're doing is you're saving the wildlife. I'd like to think so. Yes, absolutely. I think you are. So we've got our, what I'll I call right our there. marine debris. Mm -hmm. And then another really popular item that we see thrown away a lot um, are actually old rubber inner tubes. Are my hands going to get dirty from this? Or? They shouldn't get dirty from my inner tubes. They shouldn't get dirty from your inner tubes. No. Tube. And you'll tell me about that in a minute. I will tell you about that in a minute. So tell me, so you're getting your inner tubes from the... From local bicycle shops. Yeah, and I actually, I work with um, even, believe it or not, inner tubes come in all different shapes and sizes. So even from these tiny little bicycle inner yes. tubes, um, all the way up to inner tubes that would literally um, encircle me because they're from these big <laughs> tractor trailers. Exactly. <laughs> so, so these are three of my most popular um, materials that mm -hmm. I work with and three things that, that I, I like to think I keep out of the landfill on a regular basis. You know, I, I see that. We have a plastic bag uh, ban in Hawaii. So you have these, these items that come from mattresses, but plastic bags. Are you still able to get plastic bags? You know, um, ironically, uh, what I get when my friends go on vacation to the mainland and internationally <laughs> is they don't bring me back stuff. They do bring me back plastic bags. But but you're right. I did see, um, once we enacted the plastic bag ban, which was a wonderful thing, I started to see less and less colored plastics coming into my collection. And so as a result, I've actually started testing or playing with um, painting the plastics, mm -hmm. which has had amazing results. And so now I'm able to um, further customize these in an artistic process. So you're adapting with changes in society. Uh, absolutely correct, yes, yes. Okay. So now that we have these raw materials and things like that, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about um, how you make, make what, what do you do with these things, I mean? Well, so the plastics are really amazing and, and obviously, as we all know, lend themselves great towards melting. So I actually, in my studio back at home, I have a commercial heat press. And a commercial heat press. A commercial heat press, correct. Now, is it, what's, what's it like, this big thing that you pull down or? It, it's, a, it's a decent sized piece of equipment okay. and it takes a little bit of muscle to lock it into okay. place. But you can handle that. But I, but I can handle that, okay. yes, That's yes. Cool, cool. Um, it gives me 100% um, temperature control and um, so it's allowed me to to really scale up the, the production of melting my plastic. So you have to be real specific when handling these things. What happens if it's too warm or too cold or whatever? 
Well, if it's too cold, it's not going to melt. Okay. Um, but we have to be really careful when you're melting plastics that if you actually um, create too much heat and burn plastic, you can create a really toxic byproduct. And so I'm very, very careful to make sure that I'm doing this at a low controlled heat. Do you wear a mask or something? I, I do wear a mask. Um, Interesting. Yeah, you know, they, they say I, I shouldn't even need to wear a mask because of the temperatures I'm using, but better safe than sorry. That's, you know? good. Yes. That's good. That's, That's good. good. Yes. Plus, it feels cool to wear a mask. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually take these, these thin sheet plastics mm -hmm. themselves and I'll create a sandwich and I'll kind of just Go ahead. sandwich yeah. these down. Here, let me move this for a second, give Perfect. you a little more room. And we'll take a little bit of our, our no, plastic what are, here. What are those? Th so these, these, are... these are colored plastics and even right down to the scraps, I keep every little piece of plastic because this is going to lend itself to a great abstract design. And this is you're getting from these plastic bags over there? This is These are scraps from these plastic bags, that's okay. correct. And what we'll do is I'll just build up a couple of layers of these. We'll take this and I'll put it into my mechanized heat press back at home. And once we release the heat press, we're, we're going to end up with a material that's going to look similar to something like this. So you can see okay. here. So when you put this in, you're really not just dumping it in there. You're layering it to kind of make a design then. So that Absolutely. becomes part of your artistry and your designing of the material. Absolutely correct. So and nothing's I, the same. Nothing's the same. So I like to call it usable art and no two designs can ever be replicated. Mm -hmm. And so this is a result of when we melt plastic on plastic. Um, but as we talked about earlier, we've been running out of those colored plastic bags. So I've actually been um, putting some work into painting these plastics. Can so I see that for a second? Absolutely. Where are you doing this? What you'll see here is the blue background has been hand painted and then our dolphins have been added via silk screen stencil. Now when you paint plastic it rubs off, right? It does. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and laminated and another couple of layers of plastic over the paint to mm -hmm. form a protective layer for that. So now you have a stencil. Yes that you put on this. It's like screen painting, like when you screen paint shirts and exactly all that Exactly kind of right. So I'm, I'm screen printing, but I'm doing so on plastic. Now, so you designed your own screen prints. I do. I do design my own silk screens, and um, I have my own customizable silk screen process. So if we can think it or print it, we can make it. Very interesting. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's a result of the painting of our plastics. Okay, I'll put this down. So that's how you're, you're taking care of your plastics. And so all your plastics are going to be soft like that then. So that's going to be a result of this technique here and this type of plastic. Now, when we start to get into the rope fibers and the marine debris, we're going to get a slightly different result. Mm -hmm. um, be yes. You know, be before we get into this, yeah. why don't we take a, a short break Perfect. and then we'll get into the rest of our materials. Why don't we do that for a Sounds second? Sounds great. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be right back in a minute or two. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger, and hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground, uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Make it a better Try a little more, hard on every more, let's do what we can. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, 
energy and maritime, energy and aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Welcome back. And Maddie May, we've been talking about how we take these materials and you kind of have a soft plastic material mm -hmm. that you're working with. And I was asking you now, all your materials, they're not all soft like that. So oh. how do you how do you make them hard or, or whatever be it? Well, the, the hard is kind of a byproduct of, mm -hmm. of what it is that I'm melting. Um, a lot of these um, marine debris, ghost nets and, oh, and ropes that, that I we hung collect, myself with. the one that you hung yourself with. Um, so these are actually polyesters and nylons. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is that these are going to melt to a bit of a thicker and more r rigid material. So that's going to lend itself to a slightly different product. And I actually brought today to show you kind of the, the type of materials that this results in. And so if you see here, what I've done is I've taken the inside, the core of this rope here. Mm -hmm. You see that beautiful rainbow core on yeah, the inside? Yeah. Well, I've separated out those fibers. And just like the plastic over here, I've created a, a sandwich technique where I put these fibers between layers of plastic. Can you show us how that's done there? I, uh, yeah, we can show you how it's done. I mean, I'm not going to give away all my secrets here. Oh, today. okay, okay, not all your secrets. <laughs> but I mean, just just like before, we're gonna we're gonna spread out in in a mm -hmm. in a much more refined way, create layers of our plastic. And then it would um, come out like this. So this this is going to come out like this in one thin layer. And, and what I brought here today was two different pieces to kind of show you. If you feel that one, it's a little bit thinner. This is thicker. And it's it's got some more of the detail in it, and that's because I built these up layers at a time and so, so this is to show you a so little bit of that building process. It, up, it gets thicker and thicker and gets harder thicker and harder. And, thicker. and if you see you still see that there's a few holes in this plastic here. Yes you can see little holes in here. So this material is indeed still like a teeth work. Marks. Like teeth marks. Oh, this, this material is still indeed a work in progress. So okay. we'll take a few more layers to build up before that piece of base material is complete and ready for the next part and of the process. And then it becomes nice and rigid. Nice and rigid, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you process these. And so we've looked at how you're processing plastic bags into a, a softer material. Mm -hmm. And then we're taking the ropes and, and nets and things like that. Exactly. Because it's all yep. made from this particular material mm -hmm. and how you're making a, a harder, shall we say, uh, material exactly yeah. that that you you're going to use for some different products yeah, right totally yeah, but you also brought these well these aren't so dirty but dirty inner tubes you know, i was afraid i was going to get all black you know how you touch a tire and it gets ooh. that's my hands get all black when i first received my rubber inner okay tubes. but they're not um, black today they're not black today so they come to me in piles of oil mm -hmm. and covered in grease and the notorious white talcum powder that coats the inside of an inner tube. Yes. Um, and when I first get them, the, the first part of the process is to clean them. Mm -hmm. And so each inner tube, each piece of rubber itself, has to be um, hand cleaned. And once the process- Inside of, and out? For, for the thin ones that are meant to be tubes, they're not gonna get scrubbed on the inside, but they will get rinsed through the inside, okay. absolutely. Um, and once the cleaning process is completed, we are then going to hand condition each one of our inner tubes. And I brought you a nice big piece there. That was actually a mountain bike tire. Okay. And I really like the mountain bike tires because as you can see, it gives us a really nice big piece of material once mm -hmm. we have that all cut open. So it's a piece of rubber. So, well, we actually have a new name for this material. Oh yes, please, please. Uh, we are calling it vegan leather. Now I can understand that. It, it really lends itself to a, to a, a similar feel. And, um, nice and soft. And look, my hands are nice and clean. And when I, when I work it, I work it just like I would work a leather product. Mm -hmm. And so um, the bicycle rubber inner tubes really been kind of an overwhelming material because I didn't realize how much rubber inner tubes were being thrown away on a regular basis 
until I started to go and to work with the local bike shops. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. And Bernard, it's Ironman season in October. Yes. And so as you can imagine, um, there are a lot of inner tubes um, just past October that are looking That's for That's right. Homes. This is December, so you must have had a big cleanup there, already. There's a lot of rubber inner tubes sitting under the house right now. Okay. Yes. So this okay. is our vegan leather. So this product. is this is the material that you're going to use to be making things. Right. So so with all with and all of our even um, with the little patches with in the it. little patches, it, you know, all these inner tubes still have many miles to give. Oh yes. 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 So now we have materials. We have vegan leather. We have more rigid plastic, and then we have some soft plastic. Mm -hmm. Now what happens? All right, so now all the fun begins, um, or at least a lot of sewing begins in, in our first case here with our thin plastics. Okay. So my uh, upcycle-wise most popular item by far, our biggest seller, are our um, water-resistant fused plastic zipper pouches. And, okay. And so I brought you these today, and that is exactly the perfect thing that these materials lend themselves to. Caution. Now, this is one of my original caution tape bags, and um, so you can see that I, I did take this caution tape from an event that I had did, I believe in Kailua Kona um, last year, and, and simply used that to create a melted design mm -hmm. on the bag. Um, I was inspired by the opening of Fissure 8, and as I mentioned, yeah, we were doing some hand painting, so this is one of our hand painted fused plastic pouches here. Go ahead, yeah. And... And so now when you say hand painted, so all this is hand painted, and then you put a piece of plastic over it to protect all the painting. So absolutely. this will never wear off. It will never wear off, no, absolutely So this not. thing could last a lifetime. Well, according to the charts that I know, plastic's supposed to be around for 80 to 1,000 years. So, that's a lifetime. So some of my work may indeed outlive me. Yes, that's correct, that's correct. Um, we've also got one of my um, favorites here. You can see, if you look very closely, I've taken all of those warning signs off of plastic bags and, and created kind of a, a melted plastic applique design there. This is great. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about uh, co-branding earlier. And so yes. here I have just a small sample of um, a Mahi Mahi. And this is a design that belongs to Sundot Marine Fish Flags. Yes, located in Hilo. Located over on the Big Island. And they approached me um, a few months ago to, to take their logos and recreate them onto my melted fused plastic bags. So now what do they do with these? So now we're, this is actually just a small portion of mm -hmm. what will become a zipper pouch. And okay. they sell them on their website and they sell them at their markets. And, and so it's a, it's a beautiful co-branding opportunity. Okay, so now you've co-branded with with this company. Sundot Marine Fish Farms. So yes. with Sundot Marine. Now are there other other major co-brandings that you've done so far? There are. I just completed a 600 bag order with the Four Seasons. You know, I'm looking for my sample, but I don't see that in my handy dandy bag today. That's fine. Um, it was uh, one of my hand painted fused plastics here, and we were able to take their silk screen logo and just replicate it right onto the back. So as we mentioned before, if it prints or we can think it, we can make it. And okay. so all of our designs are fully customizable. I brought Hard one stuff. more to show you just okay. so that we could see oh, the difference the in colors. Water. Can you see the pineapple in here? Beautiful. You can see why we've gone black with yeah. our logos on there. But now you have some harder things that I you do. make and yes. you're running out of... So you can see here I'm wearing my earrings. So yes. these are actually melted fused plastic put onto earrings. And why stop at earrings when we can take those and we can make, we have night lights here. So Bernard, I'm going to hand those to you. Okay, I'm going to put these I'm gonna just like reach here down. so people can start to see them. And we've got our bookmarks. Let me give you my dolphin here. He's, oh, this is, can, it, I, can I take this home? You can. Okay, Watch out, his, 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 um, his blow spout was getting a little bit funny okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. And, and then, you know, one of our very new products here is our the melted waves. marine debris key rings. Oh, beautiful. So, beautiful. And oh, my wife would like this. Thank you. That's our new Honu. And then, of course, because we're from the Big Island, we've, yes. got, we've got our Big Island. Mm -hmm. Lots of products here. Um, let's go ahead and earrings. put a few earrings out just because they are, they are and my you have favorites. The, you had a black one down there, too. So our, our vegan leather earrings? Yeah. All right. So, well, you know, because nothing would be complete. Oh, there's that. 
Here's our Four Seasons bag. Okay. Um, nothing could, would be complete without making some zipper pouches. So you can see we have our vegan leather zipper pouches here. Very nice. Very nice. And you can't make anything out of leather without making wallets. And so we've, of course, oh, got our wallets. Oh, these are perfect. And your money doesn't fall out either. No, and you it, can put it, it in your back pocket and it will grip. The grip, unless somebody tries to rip it out. Well, they'd have to fight me for it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to fight you for it. And then the creation of all of these rubber inner tube products are going to require cutting and, and around the edges, mm -hmm. which is going to leave me with a bowl full of scraps. So I'm actually able to take those scraps and take it one step farther. Yes. And we've created an entire line of different earrings that are all made well, let me from put, our vegan I'm going to put this right over here. here so everybody can see it. Yes. Oh, this is pretty, too. We I'll add a little Swarovski right crystal on that one here. Oh, look at this. Yes. This is fantastic. Put this right over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand and, it and up And while like you're that. reaching for that, I'm going to put a couple of our melted plastic earrings on the table just okay. to complete yeah. our display here. So this goes to show that, that really the possibilities are endless mm -hmm. when it comes to reclaiming and repurposing. And um, if you have the creative mind to, to think these things through, then, you know, the way that I look at it is we're throwing away a lot of materials that deserve a second life and with a little bit of love and effort can, can re-shine again. I have one more question. Yes. The world. Yes. The world can order these products from you. You can co-brand around the world. Mm -hmm. I believe you once told me that you, you're, ha you're in the process of co-branding in Japan. Yes, absolutely. We're in the middle of doing some um, custom work with a, with a retailer out of Japan at the moment right so now. So how do people contact you? Well, you know, in the world of Google, it's very easy. All you have to do is Google Upcycle Hawaii, and I very well should be the first thing that jumps to the top of the there list. There you go. But you can dial right into our website at www.upcyclehi.com. Okay, and that's shown right on our screen right now. Upcyclehi.com. And then I'm very active on Instagram. I like okay. to share the behind the scenes stories. And so the best way to get that information is to follow me at Upcycle Hawaii on Instagram. Now, Upcycle Hawaii, oh, there it is right there on our screen now. Perfect. And that, that's spelled out. That one's spelled out, Upcycle Hawaii. The mm -hmm. website is upcyclehi.com. That's Correct. terrific. Yes. Well, I want to thank, thank Maddie May for coming to visit with us today. This has been a fantastic time. We've learned about recycling saving marine life, how you can make materials, and then how you can make final products which are usable and actually can last a lifetime. Well, I want to thank you, Bernard, for bringing me to Think Tech Hawaii today. And more importantly, thank the Small Business Development Center for helping Upcycle Hawaii grow and reach the potential that we really can reach. We couldn't do it without you. Well, everybody out there in the world, you, you'll be able to contact Upcycle Hawaii. They're, we can show their website and Instagram on the screen again. And we want to thank you again for joining us today. Maddie May, thanks for being here. Absolutely, Bernard. Have a beautiful weekend. You too. Aloha. Aloha.